Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, count unguarded cells in grid. This is kind of a fun one. It's more fun to just think about the problem rather than coding it, to be honest, because coding it is pretty repetitive. Let me uh, blow up this grid over here. Sorry about the colors. I don't have much control over that. Okay, I think that's a little bit easier on the eyes, but the idea here is we're given a two-dimensional grid and we're actually not given the grid itself. We're given the dimensions of the grid. So for this example, we are given M equals four, N equals six. M refers to the number of rows and N refers to the number of columns. Now, if you were to swap these, it wouldn't really matter. It won't change the problem. Like if you just took this matrix and rotated it 90 degrees in either direction, it would not change the problem. So as long as you're consistent with how you use uh, these two variables, you should be fine. The idea though is we're given two more parameters. One is a list of coordinates called guards. So that's what the G's represent. So there's a guard at 0, 0, at 1, 1, and at 2, 3. There's also a list of walls, and we're given three of them at 0, 1, a 2, 2, and it looks like 1, a 4. So that's uh, what this matrix here represents. And sorry, I just realized that maybe the color scheme here was important for people who are uh, colorblind, and maybe this is harder to see. But if you can't see the colors, that's okay, because honestly, what you want to be paying attention to is these arrows anyway. All these uh, cells that have like an arrow within them, those are cells that are guarded. So you can see this guard over here. A guard can basically look in four directions, I guess, simultaneously. Don't know how that works, but that's what they can do. This guard can't look to the left. There's nothing there. Can't really look up either. Can't look to the right because there's a wall there. The wall is obstructing uh, this person's field of vision, but they can look down. So they can see all these cells here. This guard can see the same cell and it can see two additional cells and it can see a couple cells over here. And this guard over here can see a couple here, over here, and then this additional one. This one was already seeable by this guard, so I guess it's double seen by these two guards, um, but it can see this one as well. So now, knowing all of that, we want to then determine what are all the cells that cannot be seen, how many of them are there. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So we would return seven in this example. So how exactly do we solve the problem? Well, honestly, even a pretty basic simulation will work, but there's a way to make it slightly more efficient. Think about this for a second. First of all, remember that they didn't actually give us a grid. If you try to solve the problem without a grid, I mean, maybe it is possible, but it would be kind of annoying because think of this. Uh, let's say we just iterate over all the guards. The size of the matrix is four times uh, six, so there's 24 total cells. And then we say, okay, well, we have one, two, three guards, so then a minus three from there. We have one, two, three walls, so minus three again. And now we just have to uh, count the cells that are guardable, and then we subtract that total amount. So the problem just becomes figuring out how many cells are guardable. So you go through every guard and you say, okay, well, this one can't really look in any of these directions, but it can look down. All three of these cells are unoccupied, so we count them. We'd subtract those three from our total as well. And then you'd go to the second guard and do kind of the same thing. Okay, you can see these two, you can see these two, and you can see this one. But we already counted this one. So how do we know if we already counted a cell? I mean, now you might get into the thought process of using like a hash set or something, but why do that in the first place when we could just make the problem a little bit easier and just have a grid, and then instead of counting the cells that can be visited, we actually mark the cells that can be uh, visited, and by visited I mean uh, guardable. And so after we mark those, then the problem becomes pretty simple. All we have to do is, like after we've marked all of them, we can just then iterate over the entire grid and then count how many cells can't be seen. One, two, three, and then you know it's gonna be a total of seven that have a position that cannot be guarded. And you might think, well, that seems kind of inefficient, doesn't it? Because for every single guard, we're doing in the worst case, an operation where we'll have to scan entirely vertically and possibly entirely horizontally as well, that's gonna be an N plus M operation. How many times are we gonna do that? Well, however many guards there are. You could say that's G. In the worst case, G could be proportional to the size of the matrix, so it seems inefficient 
at first glance, but think about the implementation. Think about uh, this for a second. Like, let me just kind of draw one row just to make it a little bit easier. Let's say we have a guard over here, guard over here, and we could have a bunch more guards, but just to keep it simple, I'll just kind of do something like this. And let me actually get rid of this wall for a second. Let's say we go through this guard first. We see, okay, it can guard this position and it can guard everything to the right of it. Boom, boom, boom. And then eventually we reach this guard. And at that point, we don't really need to go any further because while we could keep scanning, we already know we're probably gonna visit this guard sometime in the future, or maybe we have already visited this guard. So we could stop right there. Similarly, if this guy was a wall, we could have stopped as well. Now, maybe at some point in the future, we're going to visit this guard as well. We're going to go in both directions. We're going to go to the right, and then we're going to go to the left. So we'll maybe end up revisiting these cells. Is it really that big of a deal? Because it's not like it's going to be visited more than twice. Like this entire row isn't going to be visited more than twice. None of these cells should be. I mean, maybe if there's another guard up above and they'll scan like vertically, we might. But still, in the worst case, I don't think a cell will be visited ever more than four times. In the worst case, there might be a guard above and there might be a guard below it. But basically what I'm getting at is even though this solution might not seem that efficient, in the worst case, I do think it's proportional to the size of the matrix. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the way I'm going to be coding it up at least, as long as you kind of initialize all the guards within the grid before you start running the simulation, it really shouldn't be much more inefficient than the size of the matrix. And practically speaking, it's not like we're going to have a ton of guards most of the time. So this solution should be pretty efficient. Let's code this up. So the big thing is just kind of having a matrix. I'm going to initialize it to be all zeros. So there's this many columns, and then we're going to have uh, this many rows, M rows. If you don't know what this syntax is about, this is list comprehension. I cover it pretty in depth in my Python for Coding Interviews course has a bunch of interactive lessons if you're interested in that. But we're going to be representing four different states within this grid. Let's say zero is free. Let's say one is a guard. Let's say two is a wall. And let's say three is a guardable position. We kind of need to distinguish between this and all of the others. So it does make sense to give this its own uh, state. And then we add the guards and the walls to our matrix. So let's say a row column in guards because guards is a list of pairs. We're unpacking the coordinates of each guard and then we're gonna mark that guard with a one. We'll do the same thing with the walls just like this and we'll mark that with a two. So now what we're gonna do is iterate once again actually over all the list of guards like this for row column in guards. And then we're gonna run a helper function. I'm gonna call it mark guarded. So for this particular position, we know there's a guard here. So we're going to go in all four directions. I'll define that helper function up here, call it mark guarded, passing in row column pair. You might think, well, looks like I'm kind of having two similar loops here. Why don't I just throw this in there or maybe move this above the loop over here and then I can combine these two loops. No, that's going to make the solution inefficient for reasons I kind of talked about earlier. That is going to sort of break the guarantee where a cell will only be visited at most four times. If we don't do it that way, we could end up in a situation where we keep visiting the same cell several times. And the reason for that is because in this function, we're now going to go in all four directions. So uh, let's say from left to right. So I'm going to say for row in range r plus one because we know this is the coordinate we're at we want to go left to right i guess this is really going top to bottom because we're incrementing the row but we're going to go from row plus one to the last row so we'll say m m is the number of rows and we want to basically mark all these cells as guardable so we want to say row column and so this is was the coordinate of the guard so here we actually want to use this variable that we're uh, calling row. I know the variable names are a little bit confusing, so just kind of have to be careful about that. This is the guard row, and this is the direction that we're going in. So we'll mark this with a three. Now, remember, there is a case where what if we had a wall? Well, at that point, we'd stop iterating. So if we say grid of row column is equal to three, we want to stop iterating, or sorry, not three, a two, walls are two. 
But same thing if we see a guard. At that point, we don't have to continue looking. We know that that guard will be able to see in that same direction anyway. So at that point, we'd be able to stop. So I'm going to put a break statement inside of this condition. And I'm going to change this equality to an in operator. If this is in either a 1 or a 2, if it's equal to either of these, then we want to break. And so I want to do the same thing that I'm doing here, except going in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to say is here, uh, starting from row, or rather, I want to go from zero to the row, but I want to go in reverse order. So I'm going to do this reverse. And remember that in Python, the row here is non-inclusive. So we won't actually be visiting the starting coordinate. We'll go everything to the left of that from a right to left. This uh, looks correct to me. And if you're unfamiliar with some of these like tips and tricks I'm doing, I believe I do cover them in my uh, Python courses on NeatCode.io. So now we want to do the same thing except shifting the column. So I'll say for column in range from column plus one up until n. And I'm going to have some similar code as this. So I'll go ahead and just copy and paste it in there, except this time the row is going to stay fixed and the column is the thing that's going to be shifted. Same thing down here. And so we also want to do the same thing in reverse. So let me go ahead and just copy and paste that. So going from zero up until the column, but not including the column, but we want to do this in reverse order. So just wrap that in a reverse. And I believe this is good. I might be missing something. It's really easy to make a mistake when you're copying and pasting code, but I think this is mostly correct. And you can see why this code is pretty repetitive. There's nothing really interesting about it. I think that's more or less the entire code. Well, almost all of it. So now that we've kind of updated the grid, we've set the state of the grid, we just have to count the number of unguarded positions. So I'll set that in result. That's where the count will be. I'll go over every position in the grid. I don't actually have to do the positions. I just need the value of each position. So I can do this in Python for every row in the grid. And then for every row, I want to get the value. So for every n in the row. If n is equal to zero, it's not guarded, so I can increment my result by one. And then after that, that's what I want to return, this result value. So that's the entire code. I'll zoom out. It's gonna be hard to fit all of this in one screen, so I'll have to kind of get rid of these empty lines. Sorry about that. But this is the whole code. Let's give it a run. And you can see here that it works, and it is pretty efficient for reasons I talked about earlier. There is a slightly different way to implement the solution, which will have the same time complexity. It's actually guaranteed to be the time complexity like m times n. So I'll briefly talk about that solution, and then I'll just show you the code of it. It's also pretty repetitive. I think it's even longer than this. So let's quickly talk about that. So this is one of the ideas that I came up with. It's kind of similar to what I had talked about earlier. Suppose we had a row. And we could have had several guards. We could have had a guard there, a guard here, a guard here, and we could have had some walls in between or not. We want to mark, let's say horizontally, the cells that they can see in horizontal directions. So we can go from left to right. So we're going left to right. We have some empty cells here. We don't do anything with them. We see a guard now. Okay, now that you've seen a guard, every time you see an empty cell now, mark it as guardable. So I'll just mark it with a red and then a red here. And now we see another guard here, so we're not gonna mark this as red, but we'll continue marking these. Had we not seen a guard, maybe instead here there was a wall. At that point, we'd say, okay, now these cells are not going to be guardable, so we would leave them as free had this been a wall. So then we'd keep going to the left. Now we see a guard again, so now we're gonna say, okay, everything we see after that should be guardable. Now you might have noticed something, this only covered the guards seeing in the right direction. Maybe there is a way to do this with one pass and having the guards see in both directions, but I think implementing it is a lot easier if now you just go through this entire row in the opposite direction. So now I'm gonna go from right to left and these are already guarded. So now I see a guard here. Now these are gonna be guarded. I see a wall here. So I'm not gonna mark these as guarded, but they're already marked as guarded. And then I'm eventually going to see this guard, so I'll mark everything to the left of it as guarded. So you can see how this works on a single row, and there's no reason we can't apply the exact same when we're doing it with columns. Because geometry, I mean, you rotate this thing 90 degrees, how does that change the problem? It literally doesn't change it at all. Just kind of a basic fact of geometry. 
But as you can see, this code is going to be pretty repetitive. It's going to require us to, over uh, the input grid here, go through every row like this, and then go through every row in the opposite direction. So you do that, like visit each row twice, and then you do the exact same for every column. This basically guarantees that we're going to visit every single cell four times, whereas in the previous solution, the upper bound was that we'll visit every cell four times. So this solution actually, even though it's guaranteed to be M times N, you'll see that this solution, the real runtime is actually less than the previous solution. Even though like the code of this solution isn't super interesting, I do think this kind of complexity analysis is the most valuable thing from this problem. I hope you understand why this solution is less efficient than the other one. And if you don't, maybe you want to rewatch that beginning of the video where I was talking about the uh, complexity analysis. So I'll briefly walk you through this code. Most of it's pretty similar. The setup is the exact same. We have a matrix. I guess you can see the comments that I had when I was coding this one up for the first time. As it says, just go through rows and columns in both directions. So I kind of just did it without simplifying the code at all. So you can see here, I go through every row. I go through the row from left to right. I go through the row from right to left. I have a Boolean flag, which tells me, have we seen a guard before? And if it's true, uh, here we'll be marking empty cells with a three because then they are guardable. If I see a guard, I will set the flag to true. If I ever see a wall, which is two, I will then set the guard flag to false. And this is doing it with the rows. The bottom code here doing it with the columns is pretty much identical, just kind of flipping the direction that we are going in. And then after we do that, we do the rest of the code the exact same. Just count up how many cells are not guarded. So I'll show you that this code does indeed work, and I'm sure it will not be as efficient. So running it, you can see, yep, it is less efficient, but I think it's not that much less efficient. Let's compare the exact runtime. So this one was 471 milliseconds. Whereas the previous one was 293. So you can see it's not like it's an order of magnitude faster. It's like maybe twice as fast or a little bit less than that. But both of these solutions are proportional in efficiency. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.